we're going to talk a little bit about the future of the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center because I think that we've learned a lot in the last few months about um, technology and we want to think about how as we slowly begin to get back to being in person, we don't lose some of the skills that we've learned and try to figure out how to integrate them. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be an interactive discussion that you will have ideas or comments or thoughts uh, to share with us about this. I'll just update you a little bit about how the um, Senior Center is doing. Um, we have um, last year, our membership was a little lower than in 2019. Uh, we were at uh, 1,420 members, which was down about 160 from the year before. And I count that just with the idea that people not coming into the center, they didn't, uh, they didn't think about renewing or uh, joining their membership. We've had a very active number of new people joining in the last few uh, weeks and months. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that we are a uh, location that's being used by Bainbridge Prepares and the city of Bainbridge Island and Bainbridge Island Community Pharmacy as a vaccination site. But we actually are a little below 1100 or a little above 1100 right now. So uh, we are not, I mean, we're the membership effort continues every year to be part of the piece of the pie. Uh, we encourage people to join at $20 a year because that is sort of a barometer to the city or grantors or other donors of how many people um, see the value of the community center. And I think that, uh, that that value has changed over time a little bit. Just uh, it is both a senior center and a community center and the opening up for the vaccination sites is part of that. I'm also happy to report that uh, we've been able to help out AARP tax aids, and I'm hoping that as early as next week, we'll start to have uh, tax meetings here for people who have used AARP in the past. They've gone to the library before, but the library KRL is still not open. So we talked to them about using CUNY Hall on a limited basis. It will be like a lot of things, uh, not the way it was last year. Well, last year, I don't think they did it at all until after COVID hit, but there won't be like, come first come first serve. There'll need to be some sort of signups and obviously all the kind of precautions that we're taking. But um, that's the kind of thing that we just wanna be flexible about it enough to respond when the, when the need arises. Um, I would say that, uh, that although our membership dropped a little bit last year. As I said, our activities really did not. And the number of people who were active, if we count uh, the number of people who were touched or who reached out uh, as part of uh, calling, we had a calling tree at the beginning of the, of the pandemic to check in with people to let them know about uh, that the senior center was still open and also um, find out if they were doing okay and if they had family and friends or people that they were able to be in touch with. And most everybody we talked to was holding up okay by their own report. And we did have a couple of calls. We did it a couple of times. Uh, that has dropped off a little bit as our uh, focus has shifted, uh, but we continue to to reach out to them. Uh, Joan, you've, uh, you're waving. Is there something you'd like to, uh, to add? I, I want to tell you that my contact person is very very faithful calling me every week. And I certainly appreciate that. And the other thing I want to tell you is that my daughter just called and said, mother, I just sent in my membership for my husband and I, two separate ones for this year. And because she thinks it's wonderful that I am so enjoying it, which I am. I, I love this, that place. First place I found when I got on the island and I'm here to stay. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. And I know that, uh, that the um, experience of being involved at the center uh, has changed a lot because you were a regular here for often for lunch, often for activities. And uh, and yet 
this year. It's been <laughs> it's been seeing you online. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> I miss walking down there. I miss my exercise coming down there, but that's good. You know, it's okay. It's I'll okay. Wait. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do what we can. I'll be down Saturday to get my shot. Oh, good. Excellent. Congratulations. That's good. Um, yeah, I would say that one of the things that we have, uh, that we have tried to do are these, um, these virtual meetings. And uh, Karen, I know that you have been doing, in fact, even today, karaoke, uh, mm -hmm. which you used to do in the fireside room. Uh, you're yes. now doing on uh, on Zoom. How how is that going? I there's more participants than ever. We're averaging around thirteen to fifteen people. So um, it's well, just going very, very well. That's very interesting. It makes me wonder about like what kinds of things that we're doing now online. We might want to consider continuing to do online. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I find it easier to do from home than I did at the senior center also. Right. You're, well, you're sharing a screen, whereas before right. we were setting up the video on the screen and having to mm -hmm. plug in your computer and all that. Um, now, Evergreen Singers, obviously, will be very happy to get back together. Uh, yes. uh, the harmonizing for them is important, and uh, as Jim will attest. and um, no, it's you can't harmonize on Zoom. No, it. Uh, I tell everybody to mute themselves. So Iris, <laughs> Iris, and Nancy have been doing uh, Evergreen Singers as a a check in. Once a they've had some meetings on Zoom, and then they have been giving little uh, just check ins by uh, email, um, and then once a month or so getting together. Uh, on Zoom, and they get about five or eight people, I think. So that's not been as successful as karaoke uh, online. Uh, anybody else have any comments about programs that they feel have worked or not worked uh, in this time? Don. I talked to um, Ms. Ms. Villeray from um, Kitsap Physical Therapy. Yeah. Just to check in with her, she said she's had a really tough six months, a number of back surgeries, but she's anticipating that, uh, that she will be able to resume online um, exercise program for seniors, the SAIL program, next month. Okay. Okay. So Leah has had some real challenges, this, uh, this health challenges. And I know that you were a regular at SAIL in person. Um, right. And do you, I mean, are you looking forward to the, to the idea that we might be able to get together? You don't need to lean forward so far, uh, actually, Don. Okay, uh, yes, indeed. Um, I do a variety of exercise programs through, uh, through, through the senior program that, that Kaiser offers, but hers is by far the best in terms of, you know, a comprehensive program of stretching and, and exercise and that kind of thing. I, uh, yeah, and I think, so I think that some of those things uh, often work better in person. I know that Helen Heaslip is looking forward to improving weather uh, because as the spring, at last spring, she was able to do some exercise classes with limited numbers of people um, across the, uh, the street on Bryan in the park. And, uh, and that's been useful. Uh, and I think people like getting together to exercise it gives you a little bit of motivation to actually see what the other people are doing and, and work together. So I think exercise is one of those things that's going to continue uh, in person. Um, I know that, uh, I don't know if you're, if you're interested in talking about this, Jeanette, but I see you're on and you're the, the chair of the resource committee and you guys have been meeting uh, virtually. Uh, has that worked better or, or worse than, uh, than trying to find a room at the center on a regular basis? of both I think that people are very happy to um, speak with us even if they live in Olympia or Bremerton or you know that has been a real advantage I think you might have been a part of the meeting where we had Dana Gargas the long-term care ombudsman because we've really looked very deeply into 
issues of COVID in long-term care settings. I mean, nationally, the uh, mortality has been somewhere between 30 and 40% of COVID deaths are in long-term care settings, both staff and residents. And, and this is an issue I'm very passionate about. So um, we actually are, are reaching out to a number of people involved in this industry. We talked with one of the representatives of Fieldstone that is going to be uh, opening soon, they say, April, the uh, new facility where Messenger House was. And that is definitely a for-profit uh, organization. Um, I think they're mostly focused here in Washington State. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, they will have dementia care right away. That's their phase one. Um, and then our next meeting, we're really looking at disability issues and access. And Tressa Johnson with the library is just wonderful because she uh, participates in a number of other organizations. There is a Kitsap County uh, Access Accessibility Council and some organizations like that we're reaching out to. And we feed things into these 1130 something to talk about. So generally through you or, or through Katie, you'll be meeting some new people. I think we're also going to have um, Dr. Kersher, Family Eye Care, talk about cataracts because a lot of people have been dealing with that issue. And just some topics, any uh, topics that you're interested in, Reed, we can help track down speakers that, that are relevant. Um, it'll be interesting. We're going to have Jenny, who is Ann Brown's daughter, is going to be speaking at our next meeting with Emily Klein, who is new at the Independent Living Program, and who we're very happy to have her on the committee. And as a community resource, she's terrific. So she and Jenny Foos, who is Ann Brown's daughter, and Jenny is a dwarf. So they have an international little people organization in which Jenny has been very active in disability rights, I think probably all her life. And so that should be very interesting. And she potentially could be um, a good speaker for something to talk about because you don't necessarily think of being very short as a disability, but it is definitely an accessibility issue. So yes. that's, that's sort of where we are right now. Are there any questions? Well, I have a question about, um, do you feel as though you've had attendance or engagement of the uh, or the membership the, of the committee drop or, or increase or stay about the same uh, when you've transitioned to meeting virtually? Well, I, I think committees expand and contract. We actually have, Sheila Kerwin is, is now on the committee because I think that she's a useful liaison both with the senior center and with low income senior housing. And then I have invited Linda Navage to be on the committee. I haven't heard back. Um, Barb Hodgkins is uh, kind of going off the committee because they're gonna be traveling a lot as soon as their vaccines are finished. Oh, she's got a grandchild in West Virginia or some god awful place. So anyway. That happens, that happens, you know. Yeah, yeah, and so I think that it's a good size. I don't think it's too big or too small. And it is a, a productive group. Everybody brings skills or, or liaison to the table, which is very useful. Yeah, I feel as though the, you know, the board has been meeting virtually and pretty much everybody can attend. I know that there are some programs uh, like uh, um, Amanda Williamson's Poetry Memoir which has expanded dramatically uh, given the ability to meet virtually. And they have, they, as with people in, uh, in the Spanish class uh, and maybe the French, French group, have people who have been in Arizona or Texas who have been joining. Uh, and they, in years past, they wouldn't have been able to participate. Yeah. And it, go ahead. Oh, well. I was just going to say, maybe you were going to say the same thing. I think in the future, what we are going to see once once lockdown is is gone, a hybrid where, for example, we could have 
uh, committee meeting and then you could have we could have a guest speaker on Zoom and, and feed it into a TV or a larger screen. I think it's just really opened up a lot of possibilities for people. I've been attending meetings on invasive species in Olympia, which is really interesting. And I would not have been able to do that in, in the past, or I wouldn't be willing anyway. Right. Um, it would take it would take a whole day to do that for a few hour meeting. And here you can drop in and participate. And I think that's, you know, I did receive, I, we did receive a grant for $2,500 from the Puget Sound Energy Foundation for mm -hmm. virtual programming. And there is a, there are, there is technology uh, that will be like a conference room, so, you know, like when you would, if you were, maybe they have these, uh, these at the city, Christina, but like you go into a conference room and there's a camera that's mounted on the wall and a screen and there's a, a microphone that's set up. And so you just basically can turn it on and you're in a Google Meet or a Zoom meeting, depending on what kind of technology you get. And I'm thinking we should figure out how to do that uh, at the senior center, maybe, maybe with a portable device so we could move it to wherever the virtual meeting was. So that if the Spanish class or the resort resources committee was meeting uh, and they uh, wanted to reserve the virtual room as well as the physical room, they could do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that that's an accessibility issue that we've uh, talked about in our strategic plan in years before. The idea of people who can't or find it difficult to make it to the center of uh, being able to participate in activities. So I think that hybrid is something we need to work through and think about. And if there's anybody on this call that would like to help with that, let me know. Richard, I see you are appearing. Do you have a comment or question? Okay, I'll guess not. Um, are there? I think that your muting is you're coming on and off the the, the microphone. Help with that. Maybe if you turn off your um, video, it will be easier for us to hear you. I don't know if is is this responsive. Well, I'm hearing you a little bit. Uh, you're, you've now muted. You hear me? I, uh, your 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 microphone is going on and off, so it's uh, it's difficult. You might try exiting and rejoining uh, or um, calling in because the video looks like you have a bad connection. So we'll see if, uh, if Richard can reconnect. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, that are, there, are there programs that you have that you would love to see as hybrids. Uh, we've mentioned a couple of them, but, uh, um, and some that might just be entirely virtual, like maybe karaoke. Um, another thing that I would like to keep doing is the idea of, of outreach, what, uh, what Joan was talking about. Maybe not once every week, but maybe every couple months we, uh, we try to check in with people, especially people who haven't um, had the opportunity to come into the center and we haven't seen them for a little while. Uh, note there from uh, from Jeanette that says uh, we might have a featured speaker once a month to a larger audience. Yeah, and we have had some uh, some of these something to talk about. For example, I think that there were about uh, seventy people who showed up to the annual meeting this year, and we were able to get uh, Gib Morrow and uh, Dr. Gib Morrow of the Kitsap Public Health District, and uh, and our um, one of our three county commissioners, Rob Gelder, uh, uh, appeared. And obviously some of the conversations about COVID have been uh, very well attended. Another very popular event was um, Joel Sackett gave a preview of a series of, vi of pictures he's going to have up at uh, the Bainbridge Island Historical Museum. Uh, they're going to go up, I think the museum is opening on the 19th. And so there'll be some pictures that you can see in person. But he showed us many of those pictures uh, over Google Meet. And so we were able to get a, 
sort of a sneak preview. And that video has not only done very well in uh, real time, but it's been shared online, which is another advantage of when we're able to record these. Yeah, I think that uh, that kind of trying to line up some uh, speakers who might uh, be of wide public interest. And actually that makes another point, which is the idea of trying to foster the kind of um, partnerships in an effort to try to keep this, uh, keep something interesting every day. I've reached out to other nonprofits on Bainbridge Island to come and talk to us about what they're doing. And that's something that we could continue to do after COVID is over. I think that that's a, that's a great, a uh, great way to uh, to make connections. Uh, somebody just joined by the phone. Is that you, Richard? Yes. Um, hello, everybody. Um, Hi. It's it, it's amazing. Um, something is just screwing up the entire transmission to me. <laughs> anyway, I could do nothing, um, and uh, figured out finally to calling on the phone and then I couldn't get the phone to work. Anyway, um, hello, um, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Um, I heard your call to vol for volunteers to help with um, what you were describing and I will be able to do that. Um, so I volunteer. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. That's great. Yes, we, we want to think through sort of what uh, what programs will make sense to hybridize, <laughs> to do a virtual and an online version and try to think about, about how those two things go together. So uh, thank you for offering to help with that. Well, um, it, will, it will be fun. And um, my experience in this goes back to the dawn of mankind. There was a time when most people couldn't even do conference calls and um, they invented services to do that and those initial companies that invented those services were my clients so um, all of that is going to be easily transferred to what we all want to do as you've been describing it so yeah, it's, 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 definitely, uh, it's definitely the future that was foretold. When I was in college, my dad came to speak to a small group about a project he was working on that was called Conferencing Via Computer. And he had this little acoustic modem and you'd type something in and somebody would answer you over the computer. It was shocking. Anyway, well, we, we're doing that now. Jim uh, Hayner has his head has his hand up, so I'm going to ask him uh, what he what he would like to share. We'll get back to you, Richard. Jim, you need it. There you go. Yeah, I did. I I, I, I did. Uh, I enjoy uh, hearing from David Harrison once a month, and I think he'd be willing to do that just to just just to uh, get a a feel for uh, a monthly feel for the. Uh, for the politics that are going on here in the United States. So that just, uh, I, I think he does a great job and, and uh, 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 although it may be a little bit to the left, uh, I don't really care. He's coming back on the 26th of, uh, of next month. And I, he was the last time we talked to him, he sounded a little reticent, but I will make a, uh, an entreaty that he might consider continuing for a while. Um, I think that's good. I do think that one of the things that we're going to realize is that once we start in-person programming, um, we probably don't have the energy to do this every day, but we should probably do it at least every week or more. Don't you think? I agree. I, I, I missed part of what you said. I said, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to be able to maintain this online program on a daily basis. I think that we should for sure at least have one of these programs. <laughs> at least one of these programs a week. Okay. Well, what do you think? Well, I know, Sheila, you've been a big supporter of something to talk about. So maybe you could yeah, talk a little bit about that. 
Well, you know, I can understand uh, because before we would have that uh, nine o'clock meeting uh, on uh, on Monday, I think it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever it was. No, it was just Monday. Just Monday. Just Mondays. Okay, so it was so long ago. How am I supposed to remember? <laughs> Uh, anyway, you know that was that was so wonderful, and those were those were the same thing as what we've been doing. Uh, the only reason I would just love to continue this is because number one, I don't have to get out of my pajamas or whatever, um, and number two, um, I, they're recorded so I can get to, get to hear them again, and number three, it's I I find them absolutely fascinating and I'm learning so much about the town and the city and the state that I live in. So I would like to be able to keep it going going. I I don't I can understand that it might be difficult to do that, but I personally would like to Lynn wants to do it though. No, Joan wants to do it too. <laughs> I, I think the biggest problem that you had obviously is is uh finding speakers and i mean we we leave that to you uh uh reed and i and i know that's a very very difficult thing to do I, i'm not in a position at this point in my my life and career to be able to to, to do that but i know the others have uh in our group have done that uh the uh, uh publicizing of of, of our our uh, uh the stores the retail stores in town for instance i think are very very good but i I, I agree that, that the big problem here, Reed, has got to be on your shoulders, and you don't have time to to uh, to, to uh, uh, recruit people on a daily basis. But it could be. You're right. It could be a volunteer opportunity if somebody wanted to be a producer, as we used to say in the radio business, yeah. a producer of these programs to make it, you know put connections together. And we have some great folks who have volunteered uh, to help host. Karen has been doing it twice a week. Uh, and uh, and we also have uh, Bob Agamalian uh, has uh, has helped out as well, um, and, and Joan, Janet, Joan Janet, Janet sorry and Janet Brooks who has been doing uh, lately the uh, the merchants you're talking about we're kind of reaching out to our Fob Friday folks and asking them to come and uh, talk a little bit about what they're doing. Uh, Joan, yes, may I say something about um, when you have a program at a store downtown to first the day before to get it set up the day before rather than have the mess up that we had with the plum was or, no it wasn't the plum it was the other one covet covet which covet covet yes. is the name of the store yes right. and, and somebody go there the, the not the day before set them up show them how to do it and give them some give them some lessons really let's well so yeah and that i mean that is the kind of work that jim is talking about specifically is we have sent out information to people in advance some people will say can i do a test and uh and we have a couple of great folks well bob agamalian and mm -hmm. uh, carolyn hart and barb simonson who are all helping with the technical side of this uh, so you don't often see them asking questions but they're helping make sure that everybody gets on um, and they have been available for doing a, a run through in advance with those folks. And that's, that's great when they, when the people take advantage of it. Uh, and I think that we'll try to have Covet back again. And yes, we should do a test with them before we, before we do that. And I should not let this moment pass without thanking Sheila Kerwin publicly for her diligent efforts at uh, keeping track of who shows up and letting yeah. us know that because you know one of the things that we need to keep we need to it's been difficult is um recognizing keeping a record of how many people are involved in programs here and if uh people like uh um, sheila weren't sending in the names of people who show up then we couldn't keep a sense of how active the center is so if you're involved in a program here if you're doing karaoke or resource group uh Feel free to keep a little agenda of who showed up and uh, let us put it in my senior center just so we can uh, uh, keep track. Is Bob Bosserman still taking those names? Because every time we do a karaoke, I send that to Bob Bosserman. Yes. So okay. you're doing, thank you. Yes, Bob is doing, Bob is, uh, actually, I think he's in Tennessee, but he is putting things into my senior center from Tennessee. 
So, Wonderful. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Nice guy. Very nice. Uh, and we're starting to get some volunteers back uh, helping with the phones at the front desk. We've, uh, we, we have had so many calls, especially after uh, an announcement by the city about new vaccine appointments, that it is helpful to have a few more people answering the phones down here. Uh, either, either Robert or Barbara uh, mentioned, let's do a program on going carless. Um, I don't know if you'd be willing to open up your microphone and talk a little bit more about that. Robert's right. This is Barbara here. Hi. Um, I put that in because we are both in our 70s and we would like to start practicing going carless before we actually go carless. And we like to hear from people who are doing it and what the resources are for going shopping or getting to different places. Sort of a, a practice. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I know that uh, we have had Kitsap Transit on before to talk about uh, BI Ride and Access Bus, and we can do that again. I do also know that there are, that that has been less than a complete answer for a lot of people. Um, and so trying to get a little bit of picture beyond just Kitsap Transit might be a good idea, but I'll definitely follow up on that because I know that that's the sort of thing where uh, Katie Auger has been helpful. Uh, our community resource navigator has helped with scheduling uh, some of these programs. And she's actually, I should mention, is gonna be um, hosting coming up uh, uh, the first week of March She's going to talk with uh, Denise from Barn about what kinds of activities are going on there. So, yeah, there are some options here, Sheila, about keeping the keeping the program going at some level. Thank you. The other thing would be also what Barbara was talking about is IBC too. Yes. Yep. Yes. That's is that what you were going to say, Joan? Yes, very much so. They are wonderful. Because I use them all the time and they are very good. That's all I have to say. Yeah, no, that's good. That's great. Yeah, I feel as though the uh, if you have an idea uh, upon descending the stair, uh, feel free to just send a note to me or uh, or to uh, info or give us a call at the at the center and uh, help us think about new ways uh, to um, continue to reach out after after we. Uh, resume some in-person in programming. Who, who, who is that strange woman who just came in? I don't know. Careful. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Uh, Joan, did you have something to say about that? Yeah, no, I was just going to reiterate the fact that you are wonderful when you write to, to read. They, you always answer. You always, you've been the best guy in the world. You're, you're my main man. That's well, if the you, end. Okay, well, I will tell you that if you write me and you don't get an answer, you better write back because it's probably got lost in my email. That's right. So do <laughs> and it. it's nothing personal. No. Yeah, I try to answer things fairly quickly because otherwise, you know, it's like a compost heap in there. It just keeps piling up. Uh, Nancy, I know that you're joining us a little uh, a little later, but I know that you have had some uh, some get-togethers uh, with uh, your Where did she camera go? went away. I know um, with your improv group, and I just wondered if the activity was greater or less than uh, than when you were trying to meet at the center. If that's if Zoom has worked as a get together method for you. I think when you were trying to turn off your microphone, you turned off your camera and now we don't see you and we don't hear you. Nancy, come back. I think she can hear Jane, us. But... Jane, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the other side of the technology issue, which I guess is uh, one of the challenges is the there she, uh, there she comes back again. So she's, she's got to unmute yourself. You've got to unmute your unmute your your microphone. The little red. There you go. Almost there. Ah, hi Nancy. 
hello, 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 hello. Oh my God. Well, that's one of the things that, that holds us back there in the old improv, because I'm not technologically <laughs> adept at anything. Um, so what we tried to do was have the class via Zoom, and I did about four of those, and we realized that it just wasn't the same. So we changed the whole format. Uh, and I think there's a word for that called pivoting. I think we pivoted with yep. the whole, you know, we just, you know, go with the flow. Uh, so now we have attendance that varies between, I would say, six and one time we had 12 or 14. Uh, normally in class, we can guarantee 12 to 14. Right. So, uh, uh, so, so I'm guessing that that, uh, that that will be a group that will want to meet in person again as soon as it's safe and uh, and possible. Yes. And we are certainly willing to, to meet uh, outside. Right. Um, in you know, so that so we're we're talking a little bit about the the hybrid issue. What kinds of things will we do online? Some groups, uh, and I'm repeating us now, uh, like karaoke, have had greater participation online than they did in person. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll kind of need to evaluate all of those things. And uh, volunteers like uh, Richard Herzog, who's just today volunteered, will help us. Kind of keep track of what things are working in what areas and what things we might not want to think about as a as a virtual get together the mm -hmm. other thing about technology um we are um on the very cusp of a program with island volunteer caregivers to provide um ipads to people for whom they're having who could like check out an ipad from the senior center uh and we're trying to develop a run book so that um, volunteers could help talk somebody through how to use the device if you're having a hard time figuring out how to use it. So that you would get a device with a camera, uh, with a microphone, and our volunteer, our tech volunteers would know how it's set up so they could help walk through challenges. Or if you are, if you do not have internet service, you can't afford it, or you just don't, we will have the some of these iPads avail, available to have uh, um, internet service through a, a provider, so that uh, you know, like uh, AT and T or Verizon or somebody. So I love this can, idea. I love this. It. Fantastic. So we have we have just received we have just received nine um, nine iPads, and Bob Hasslinger, uh, who. Uh, works with the uh, um, IVC and is just now retiring as there. He's just let his uh, his business go as an IT professional. So that means, of course, we're trying to lead on him as an IT volunteer. Um, is helping us set up those iPads, and then we have. Uh, we'll be if uh, if you know people or if you are interested in helping to be a volunteer uh, to coach people, we will work with them. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna plan to have more like uh, 30, 25, or 30 iPads. Uh, but we wanted to get started with a few and do a, a pilot so that we we know what we know a little bit about what the problems are before we get too far into it. Sheila, would you be able to? Um, would we be able to get at least a little bit of um, uh, instruction? Because it would be an iPad, which is Apple, which I don't know anything about. But I would be more than happy to to help uh, somebody set up uh, set that up because it's so important. It is extremely important that we have that kind of connection for people. So I, I would be happy and, to yes, and especially given where you live, you might be an excellent ambassador. Yeah, there there are people in here who don't have anything. That, yeah. You know, yeah. So that's that's just getting started. I know it's it. it seems like everything takes longer than you would like but uh i want it yesterday <laughs> i know uh so that's one of the things that i think we will we can see is more trying to learn more about how to leverage technology to include people who have uh, not been able to be included in the past uh nancy and maybe i can also help down at madhouse once they get the um yeah once you can work. once you can get in once you can get into madison house right nancy, nancy. No, you need, you're, you need you're, to, muted, you're muted, darling. 
Okay. Uh, it occurred to me that uh, I was afraid to touch that thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, that um, we, when we were doing, uh, we had a couple of projects that we did before you came, Reed, that involved having microphones that a group could sit around and use, and then we taped from them. So. I'm echoing myself. I don't know about the rest of you. Yeah. No, I, I know why that is. You've got oh, two, you're, you're at the meeting twice. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, so they were they were expensive at the time, and I'm pretty sure the park district has been, uh, you know, they went home in their closet, so to speak. Um, so, uh, but they were uh, very beneficial in terms of the two two class two, two groups that used them. And one was the seniors to seniors, and the other one was then when we were gathering community stories and we had that telephone booth that you went in and told stories to. Um, but those it, for for groups that want to meet and also could if if you can make those microphones, in other words, pipe out to the world, then you could have your French class at the center and have a micro that's the extent of my con contribution in terms of technicality. <laughs> that's good i got i got but i got the gist of it i think that that's absolutely possible that we and that's the kind of thing that we would look at for sure um so i'm open to uh ideas about how to how to keep this going you can certainly popcorn me as i said if you think that uh, that it would be worth um, having another uh, check-in in a month or so as we, I mean, I, we will for sure about um, how we start to normalize. I do think that there are a lot of open questions about what comes next uh, since, since we don't know exactly um, what the risks are even uh, with vaccinations because those studies are just being done uh, because uh, there are going to be some people in our populations who aren't vaccinated, although my understanding is that Bainbridge is doing a pretty good job of at least uh, meeting the needs of the target population. I saw an unofficial number that 55% of Bainbridge Island residents who are over 65 have now been vaccinated. So um, that's, that's a great, I, mean, I don't know about twice, it may just be once, but if they're vaccinated once, I don't. I haven't heard of anybody who has been denied a second vaccination yet. Right. Um, at least around here. I mean, there, there's been enough vaccine so far to to get the sec the booster. Yes. You you, you know, there's possibility. Damn it. That there are some people mm -hmm. in here that uh, desperately need are not going to be able to come to the senior center to uh, take part in any kind of discussion such as we're having here. And one person I'm thinking of is Christina because she has to stay there with removing things there that she right. <laughs> She has to stay on the treadmill. That's one of the things that yeah, we- uh... So we can't, I mean, we need her, we need to have her as part of that because she's also in the karaoke thing too. I mean, hello. So, I mean, there. So, the, but there are other people I'm sure that literally couldn't probably literally would have a hard time getting to the senior center to do well to and i know that, and i know lynn doesn't live on the island and so talking about living without a car as we were with the goldens and we'll do more of that discussion later um maybe it isn't a good day to get a ride on uh on access or bi ride and yet you'd like to still participate right right and you don't live as close as Joan, so you can't just walk. <laughs> well, thank you all. I have learned a lot and can found this. Can I ask you have a, 18? Who's 18? Oh, somebody on the phone who's been listening but not talking. Uh, would you care to identify yourself? Your last two digits of your phone number are 18. Need to press pound or star six. Star six to unmute. Okay. I don't think we're going to get that one. Anyway. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you. This is Carolyn Miller. I'm my issue that I'm I'm uh, visually impaired, so I've been I never could get the picture of you on the on the uh, iPad, 
and I hope I haven't. Right. I hope I haven't had my picture there. Have I? You have not. No. Oh, good. Because <laughs> sometimes I enter twice, and who knows? But I, I think this eleven thirty discussion is just vital for those who I'm ninety two <laughs> and confined. I'm going walking right now for a mile. I hope, but. I uh, can't get out in a car, right. so I wish to. So I, this discussion is just very vital to me. If I can't hear it for the day, I listen to it next week. I'd love to go back and hear the library thing again, if it's ever available, but I think it's just available for a week. Is that right? Are we talking about the book group? No, it's the library that Tressa did, that wonderful, enthusiastic Oh yes, it's up. No, they're all up on on YouTube and. Uh, oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, Even I'll, send you, I'll send you. I'll send. I'll send you a link. Uh huh. And okay, well, just anyway, it's wonderful for those of us who still want to keep hearing about things and hearing about you and the, the, the participants. That's oh. a very important thing that you're mentioning, Carolyn. I think that we need to think about how we can keep this going and. Uh, that's a point that uh, Sheila was also making. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay, have a wonderful day, everybody. And uh, thank, thank you. you for participating. Thank this, you, Bree. This was a good meeting because of you. Uh, and you. Thank you, Reed. Thank you, Reed. And Reed, yeah.